Shud Kala Kadosh, everybody welcome. May Zorat Hashem, Hashem may give Barachat Tzlacha to Am Yisrael. Begam Tivarechet Yaakov ben Asher, that's sponsoring the Shul. Begam Kol HaChatufim VeChatufot, kidnapped, should return to their houses, to the families, with the happiness, alive. Begam Et HaChayelim Shelanu, our soldiers, they come back from the war, and all the war finish. In this day, in this month, so Am Yisrael should never see its heart again, pain and suffering. We're going to continue with the chilek of the Mashiach. What's considered Mashiach? One is the pre-time of the Mashiach. So it says, the Gemara says, the Gemara starts the dispute about the Mashiach. So we said the Mashiach was created, what was created? So it says over here, Mashi Moshe la Mashiach. What's the name of the Mashiach? The Gemara discussed the name of the Mashiach. Who, who is going to be the What, it's going to be just the name Mashiach? Or what is it, what is it going to be? What is the name? The way Rabbi Shila Amre. Rabbi Shila said, the name, Shenemar Ad Ki Yavo Shilo. As the name stated, his name is going to be as comes as a Shilo. So what we're supposed to be do? We're supposed to be look for every person that named Shiloh and he's the Mashiach. So it says this following over here, 49.10 in a bit of sheet. Shiloh is interpreted as referring to the Mashiach on the basis of the verse, Yuvali Shai Hashem, a gift from offered to Hashem. A gift that offered to Hashem, that's what it says in Isaiah 18.7. So what does it mean? Which is the Midrash, which is the Midrash, Yaakut Shemini says, renders all the nations are destined to bring a gift to Israel and the Mashiach king, Shiloh, is formed for the two words, Shai, a gift, Lo, to him. Maharasha explains. So Shiloh, which is, means gift to him, that's the name of the Mashiach, Shiloh. What means Shiloh? A gift to him. That's what the Rashi says. So if the gift for him, that means all the nations needs to bring for the Mashiach is a gift. So you're going to say, what do we care about the gift if Bore Olam himself is going to give a gift? Gift also means they're going to subdue to him, which is means whatever the Mashiach would say, he would not be by other nations, he would not going to be influenced. Continue. Davar Deve Rabbi Yanai Omer, the school of the Yanai says, Yonun Shimo. His name is the Mashiach. First we says Shiloh. Second name gonna be Yonun. What means Yonun? Yonun is similar to Yanai. Like it says Yanai. Shenemar ye shemo leolam v'levne shemesh Yonun Shimo. As it stated, my name is be endured forever. For as long as the sun may his name continue. Psalm 17, 17, 72, 17. David prays for the success of his descendant, the Mashiach. In the 72, 16, 17, in the Tehillim says, David Amelech praying for the descendants, which is of the David Amelech, is going to be Mashiach. The Rabbi Hanina Omer, the school of Rabbi Hanina says, Shemo Hanina. His name is also named Hanina. So Shenemar, like it says in a verse, Asher lo iten lachem Hanina. As it stated, for I would not give you mercy. Who says this? Let's see. It says in Yirmiyahu 16-13, each of these sages, Rav Shilo, Rav Yanai, Rav Hanina, derived the scripture from the Mashiach name is similar to his own. This is the Rashi says. All these Chachamim derived from their own name. It was not intent to each sage the Mashiach would definitely bear the name. Rather, each sage meant the name is specific, is suited for the Mashiach because he found allusion for his scripture, Ben Yoda. So he says, are we supposed to be right now go look for Shiloh? We're supposed to be Yonun, we're supposed to be look. What are we supposed to be look? Ben Yoda says, no. The occurrence supposed to be happen during the time of the Mashiach. This is the thing that's going to happen. Marao explains the character of the Mashiach encompasses the virtue of every human being. Maharal says, each one of us have a potential of Mashiach. Each one of us. Each Yidin, each Jew has the potential of the Mashiach. Hence, one who studies 
the Mashiach will naturally be drawing, seeing his own personality. So no person right now, the way we're studying, he able to draw that personality is a fed, feed it to that specific Mashiach. For this reason, when the sages attempt to determine the Mashiach name, the name that describes his personality, that's very important also a person, his name is going to be influence him the way the people, the, pa the parents called him with the name. They conclude that he was the same as, the same as their own. There's no dispute whatsoever when this sage is said. Each one is simply stressing the aspect of the Mashiach personality with, with each his most similar. So it says each Chachamim said the personality of their own and that's the way they were connected to the Mashiach. We continue. Veshomrim, some say, Minachem ben Chizkiah Shemo. His name is Minachem ben Chizkiah. That's the name of the Mashiach. What means Minachem? As I stated, because of the comfort. Menachem, Minachem, which is comfort. Comfort. To, re to revive the spirit is far from me. Who says this? Yirmiyahu weeps over the destruction of the Yerushalayim. The verse mentioned Minachem. And the tradition taught us that is the father name of the Chizkiah. So Menachem is the father of the Chizkiah. We continue. The Rabbanan Amru, the Rabbis say, Yivaradiri Rabbi Shimon, Metzora, some says his name is Metzora, leprosy. Metzora is one is afflicted with the disease of Tzarat, which is described in the Vaikra 13. Some say. So, the house of the rabbis is, is the name Shenemar. Aven halinu hu nasa uchoveenu saval savalam vanachnu hashavnu hu nagu amuka elohim mune. As I stated, indeed, it was our disease that he bare and our pains that he endured. Where we consider him plague, smitten by God and afflicted. So, Chachamim said, Mashiach, it takes all the affliction of Jewish nation and all the pain and suffering take upon himself. It's like a sponge. He will be a Metzora and a descendant of the Rebbe. The verse that followed decided the, to the proof that the first point, that's what the Yad, Yad Ramah says. Alternatively, the Ve Rebbe means the school of the Rebbe. The Gemara in the Baba Metzia 85a relates the Rebbe indoor agonizing disease for many years. Like Rebbe, the Mashiach will, will also undergo terrible suffering. The Mashiach also go under terrible suffering. According to the Maharal, the Gemara does not mean that the Mashiach will actually be afflicted with the Tzarat. That's what it says, Maharal. He's allegorically described in this way because the Tzarat which is involved, the decay of the physical body. In a, apt metaphor for the person whose spiritual aspect is so sublime to the seems to the physical of the matter. So we continue. Isaiah 53, 4 says, Plague, it used to cannot be tzarat as a, it says in the Sefer Vayikra. The commentary stresses the, the names that are given are the descriptible rather than real. What does it mean? And all the all of them are applicable to the Mashiach. Compared to the Moses, also have, Moshe Rabbeinu has also several names, like it says in Magilat 13a. The name Shiloh, Shiloh, which is, means a gift to him, is related of the Midrash stated that all the nations are destined to bring a gift to Israel and the Mashiach king. In those kinodes, the Mashiach dom dominant over the nation. What means given a gift? Which is means each nation, whether United States of America, whether China, whether Russia, whether Europe, they're going to subdue to the Mashiach, which is going to be, he's going to be dominant. He's going to be in a power and he's going to be in a charge. So while the Mashiach is not here, we don't have an in charge people. We cannot be having charge people. They're not doing what's best for the people. From outside, it looks like they're doing for what's the best for people. Mashiach is not going to have conflict of interest of nobody. Where there's a monetary, right? When there's a money speaking, 
where there's a kavod, respect, where people does not want to leave the chair, which is kiseh, that Mashiach is not going to go for that. We continue. Amar Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman says, En mi chiyahu, if this the Mashiach among of living, kegon ana, he says, I'm some like me. Rav Nachman says, I'm like a Mashiach. Well, how can he say such a thing? So he says, he's some like me. Vaya adirim imenum shalom bekirbo yetze, shenemar, as they stated. And there the prince should be one of their own, and their own ruler should emerge from their midst. So following it says, in Yirmiyahu 30, 21, the verse teaches that the Mashiach will be powerful ruler, ruler, who is, remember, who is a member of Jewish royal family. That's who is going to be the Mashiach. The family of David. Rav Nachman passes both of these qualities. He is a, he's a father-in-law of the Ichlar, in which is David, Davidic dynasty, and the Davidic dynasty in Babylon. So in a reasonable to assume that the Rav Nachman himself was descended from David. Furthermore, as a son-in-law of the Icherlach, the Rabbi Nachman was the position of the authority. Rav Nachman stated that Mashiach will be son like, son like him in so far as meet as the qualifications and outlined in a verse. That's what it says Maharasha in Ber Sheva. According to the Maharal, Rav Nachman teaching that, that Although the Mashiach will be greatly exalt figure, he will not be divorced from the contact with his subject. Rather, he will be like Rav Nachman himself, who was directly involved in the communal matters. So the Rav Nachman says, the Mashiach is going to be, somebody has to be in a communal matters, which is, means he's going to be in a great power. He must have power. Amar, if the Mashiach is among living, Kogon Rabbeinu HaKadosh is someone like a Rabbeinu HaKadosh. Who is Rabbeinu HaKadosh? Rabbi Yudah Anasi. That's what Rabbeinu HaKadosh is. So it says, if, if he's among the dead, Kegon Daniel Ish Hamodot, he'll be someone like Daniel, great beloved. So Mashiach could be alive, Mashiach could be like Rabbi HaKadosh, or like Daniel was the prophet, was dead. What does it mean? The prophet Daniel, which is in the 1011, he called Daniel Ish Hamudot. Daniel is the greatly beloved. The translation is based on a Radak. Rashi offers two explanations of Rav's statement. Rashi now explaining to us. Number one, Aleph. If the Mashiach is currently alive, he's certainly a Rebbe, which is means Rabbi Yudanasi. If the Mashiach, if someone who is already died, is a, is a Daniel. Abarbanel explains that the possible for the Mashiach to be among the resurrected. According to this approach, the word kagon does not carry in the usual meaning of like. Number two, if a person, the most close resemble to the Mashiach is alive, it's a Rebbe. If that person is among the dead, it's a Daniel. Why are they using Rebbe already passed away many thousand years ago? Why are they using Rebbe and why are they using Daniel? Daniel passed away and Rebbe passed away. The Chazal explained to us, Rebbe and Daniel exemplify the Mashiach in so far as endure suffering. Like Rebbe Akadosh, he suffered for 13 years. Rebbe suffered disease, like it says in Baba Matthias 85a. Daniel was cast into the dawn of lions, dean of lions. Daniel, the king, threw him to the lions. What is it telling us? And each was perfectly devout. Rashi says, Rebbe Akadosh, and Daniel was perfectly devout to the Hashem, to the God. Marasha points out that Rebbe and Daniel enjoyed the position of authority. Rebbe Akadosh and Daniel, they enjoy the positions of the authority, which is one of the Mashiach qualification. Who has to be Mashiach qualification? Rebbe was the leader, Nasi, of the community of Eretz Israel. Rebbe Akadosh was who? Was the community leader. Daniel was the advisor of the king Babylon and Persia. 
in a shoot, it should be noted, Rambam writes, before the Mashiach arises, Rambam writes, he would not able to say he's the son or son or from the such a son and a family. So very important Rambam, let's make this clear. Before the Mashiach arises, you would not able to say he's the son of the son of this, he's gonna become Mashiach. Okay, and such a family, such a family. Rather, a man will arise who was not known before he, he revealed himself. He would not know himself he's a Mashiach. That's what it says in the Gere Taman. The man himself would not know that he's, he is to be, he, he is to be the Mashiach until God calls upon him. That's what the Khatam Sofer says. Until the God does not call upon himself, none of us know who is going to be the Mashiach. Until the Hashem is going to call upon him. We continue. Amar Rabbi Yehuda. So it says, Rabbi Yehuda says, the name of the Rav, Atita Kadosh Baruch Hu Lahamid Lahim David Acher. The Holy One blesses he, he destined to rise another David. What means another David? The Moshiach will be des descended of the David. That's what he says, Ben Yehuda, Ben Ishchai. From the, from the Jewish people, Vavdu et Adonai Elohim, Veta David Malkam, Asher Akim Lahem, and he stated, Do be serve Hashem, the God, and a David the King, who I will rise up from them. Yirmiyahu 39, 39 says, the verse speaks of the Mashiach era. Akim lo namar, the verse does not say he rise, past, past tense, which is canout, return to original David to the throne. Ela Akim, rather it says, I will rise in the future, which is canout the rise of someone else. See, Marashahu explains why the Gemara shifted from the first person to the third. We continue. The Gemara asks, Amar le Rav Papa le Abaye. Rav Papa says to Abaye, Dichtiv, v'david avdi nasi lahem leolam. But it's written, My servant David will be prince over them. Over them forever. What means he's going to be prince over them forever? Yechezkiel which is the prophet 37.25 says, which is indicates that it's original David who will reign over the Jewish in the future, the Gemara says. Kegon Kisar Upali Klisar. The two Davids will be like an emperor and a half an emperor. He says, don't forget, it's going to be two Davids. What does it mean? The new David who will, who will verse called Melech, king, will be supreme ruler, supreme ruler. The original David, who is referred to the Nasi prince, will be subordinated to him, which is, means you're going to have a king ruler, and you have a president or the wise president. Maharal understands the Gemara is teaching us that the Mashiach will be exalted, that even the subduos will be as great as the King David. Yad Ramah concludes his commentary to this passage with a prayer. We don't have even partial understanding of this matter. Yad Ramah says, whatever we just talked about, we don't even have a fracture when we're trying to explain. Again, I'm going to repeat. Yad Ramah concludes his, his commentary to this passage with a prayer. He says, he's praying to Hashem. We don't have even a partial understanding of this matter. May the one who knows the truth, meaning, the, meaning that teaches, teach it to us clearly and not in a some form of sake of the great name. So the Yad Ramah says, may Hashem teach us. So we'd have a clarity, a specific, that verse, whatever it says. The Gemara cites Tanaik Tanai teaching, the Rav Rav Simlai. Rav Simlai expand. Madikhtiv, what is the meaning of which is written? Havo mit avim et yom Hashem. Lama ze lachem yom Hashem hu choshech lo or. Wow, this is a strong statement. And I want to pay attention to the statement. Woe unto those who er yearn for the day of the Hashem. Why should you want the day of Hashem? Why we want the day of Hashem? If it's, it is darkness and no light. It says it's darkness and not the light. Who says this? It says in the Amod, 
5.18 and Isaiah 5.19. The prophet speaks of the people who after being warned that the God would punish men, punish them for their sins, respond mockingly. So they start mocking Hashem. Who says this? Amod in a 5.18, Isaiah 5.19. They start mocking Hashem. They says, if Hashem is such a powerful, let him bring everything that he has. Let Hashem hasten that what he would do. It is in reference to such a people that Amod exhorts. Woe, he says, woe to those people. Until those years of the day of Hashem. What does it mean? Rashi in Radak to Amod. The Gemara, however, seeks a different meaning of the verse because they describe a day when a light typically reigns and a darkness not light. If there's a light, there's no darkness. If there's a darkness, there's no light. It is benefit from the light. Look what it says. Mashal le tanigor ve atalef. He says, let me give you an analogy. A drone to the rooster and a bat. Sheya mitzapin le or. Where were you waiting for the drone of the light? Amal le tarnigor. So there's a rooster and a bat. So what's the rooster and a bat? Ani mitzape ora. The rooster says to the bat, I'm waiting for the light. She ora shelihi, because the light is mine. That's what the rooster says to the bat. Let's make it this clear. The bat, which is, does not have eyes, has, not, has no use for light. That's what the Rashi says. The Jewish people will wait for the day, day of Hashem. The redemption, because it will bring them the light. The redemption for Jewish people will bring the light. The adulterous, However, have no reason to wait for this day. Oh, you're not being fair, Rabbi. What are you talking about? Hashem loves everybody. He says following. The adulterers have, however, have no reason to wait this day. To them, it will be darkness and no light. That's what the Rashi says. So, but the rooster is asking the bad. Because the light is mine. But you, why do you want the light? That the rooster is asking the bat. Why do you want the light? You can't see anyways. What do you need a light for? So following. I know And it's for, and it was for this reason that when a certain heretic asked Rabbi Abuwa, Rabbi Abuwa says following certain heretic. Heretic which just means the non-believers. Matai ate Mashiach. When a Mashiach will come? That's the heretic is asking. Amar Rabbi Abu Ha, lahe hafil lehu hashochal lenahu inche. When a darkness covers the people, he says. When a darkness covers the people, you and your fellow heretics, Rabbi Abahu spoke in a third person, lest he gave him the impression that he was cursing the heretic. Rabbi Abahu is cursing. Indirectly, the heretic. He says, when, the heretic is asking, when is the Mashiach going to come? Rabbi Abu ask, ask, says, when a darkness covered these people. Amale, the heretic, then ex exclaimed to the Rabbi Abu, Miltakai Latali, you are cursing me, he says, the heretic. Why? Although you spoke in a third person, your intent was to curse me. That's what the Maharasha says. But Rabbi Abahu said to him, Karadikhtiv, why it is said, the verse written in the scripture, Ki Rabbi Abahu brings a verse. For behold, Darkness will cover the earth. We're talking about in the Mashiach time. And the thick clouds, the peop thick clouds, the peoples, but upon you Hashem would shine. Upon and upon you he will he will his glory be seen. Isaiah 62 says following. Rabbi Abahu answered that he was simply quoting a verse. In the response to the heretic question, and it was not intent to curse him, Maharasha. So it says in the time of the Mashiach, don't you think people that is going to be 
for everybody is great and we're going to have a party. For a lot of people it's going to be darkness. Like it says in Isaiah 60, 62. The Gemara brings the discussion about the length of the Mashiach era. How much is the Mashiach era will be? Tanya, and it was taught in the Boraita, Rabbi Eliezer Omer, he says, Yomoda Mashiach Arbaim Shana. Rabbi Eliezer says, the Mashiach era will last for 40 years. Rabbi Eliezer is not diminishing the, the glory of, of the Israel. No. In the contrary, he's increasing the Mashiach era, service as a period of the preparation for the resurrection of dead. He says, before the resurrection of dead, Mashiach is going to come, it's going to take 40 years to resurrect the dead. Rabbi Eliezer maintains that after only 40 years, people ready for the lofty spiritual level. After only 40 years. Shenemar Arbayim Shana Akum Bador. Akud Bador. Like it says in number 5, like we're ready right now, 95, 10. Shenemar Arbayim Shana Akud Bador. It stated that 40 years I should take the generation. Who says this? Telim Psalm 95, 10. This interpretation relates akut, a Aramaic root, nakat, take. The verse, those means, I will take the generation as my subject and reign over them. That's what says Rashi Yadrama. By specifying a particular generation, the verse implies that it refers to the generation different from any other. Presumably, it's the generation of the Mashiach. That's what says Rashi. According to its plain meaning, the verse refers to the generation that wander in the wilderness for 40 years. However, since the verse, akut, I would take, in a future tense, it's its understanding is alluding to the future generation, as it says in the Rashi. Marasha maintains the verse plain meaning deals with the Mashiach era. The, he derives the, this form of verse, Hayom imga kolot tishmaud, 95.7, it says following, today, if you heed his voice, if we're going to listen to Hashem today, Mashiach is going to come, which is the Gemara above understand as referring to the Mashiach arrival, if we're able to do repentance. The, the generation of the Mashiach is warned not to be behavior subordinately and test God as a generation of the wildness like he, they did. Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah says following, Shvi'im Shana, the Mashiach era will be last 70 years. Vaya Shenemar, Bayom Hawu, Venishchat Sor, Shvi'im Shana, Bayeme Melech Echad, as is stated, it should come to pass of that day, the tire should remain forgotten for 70 years, which is correspond to the day of the one king. Isaiah 23, 15 following says, The king Hiram of Tyre made a peace treaty with the king David, but after the death of the Solomon, Tyre attacked Israel mercilessly, which is without mercy. The verse warns us that the retribution of Tyre will be lie, desolted for 70 years, according to its plain meaning. One king refers to the David. Eze Melech Miyuchad. Now, which is the unique king that the verse refers to? Are you Omer Ze Mashiach? One should say the, that verse is stated that is Mashiach. Is in a contrast, the original Davidic dynasty, which is reigned over the entire country for only two generations, following Solomon's death, and the country was split into two kingdoms. The Mashiach dynasty will last three generations. That's what the Maharaja says. In his introduction to the chapter, Rambam writes that after the lengthy reign of the Mashiach will die and will be successful by his son and then grandson by specific these three generations, Rambam implies that the Mashiach would then, the dynasty would not endure any longer than before the era of the resurrection begins. That's Margiliot Hayam says. So it says, Rabbi Omer, Rabbi says, Shloshot Dorot, the Mashiach era will last three generations. Yerucha Imashamash Lifnei Yareach, 
Dor Dorim, as stated, as stated, may the fear you as long as the sun and the moon endure for the generation and genera generation and generations. Psalm 72, 5 says following. In a Psalm, David prays for his son Solomon and for his more destined dynasty descendants of the Mashiach. So let's make a little bit elaboration on a verse on a 72, 5 in a Telim. The word son alludes to the Mashiach concerning who is it's written in this very psalm. Lifnesha Shemesh Yenun Shemo. As long as the sun lasts, may his name continue. The moon is a metaphor for the Davidic dynasty, and it's written elsewhere, 89, 39, 38 Telim. Kayerech Yekon Olam. Like the moon, it should be established forever. That's what it says in the 89, 38 in the Telim. Okay, according to the verse interpreted, Yaruchayim Hashemesh Milifanai Yareach Dor Dorim. May there with the Mashiach and the Davidic monarchy fee you and for a generation and generations. Generation singular connotes the generation, while the generation plural connotes two. The verse those refers to a total of three generations. It says in order for the Mashiach to be last, it has to be three generation. Rav Hillel says something interesting and we need to understand this clearly and properly. I see a lot of people calling me about this specific Lamara and they're saying something they're not understanding because they're not reading the commentaries. Rav Hillel says following. So Rav Hillel says following. En lahim la Mashiach le Israel. There will be no Mashiach for the Jewish people. That's what says Rav Hillel. The Mashiach error, days of the Chizkiah. He says, you already enjoy the Mashiach. When Rav, Hill, Rav, Rav Hillel maintains that the king Chizkiah was the Mashiach. But the Gemara says he was a Mashiach. Hashem wanted to make a Mashiach. And all the prophets about the Mashiach king were fulfilled in him. It says, during the Chizkiah Melech, when it was ruled, all the Mashiach prophets, everything, it's already happened. Rav Hillel does not dispute, he does not dispute that the Jewish people were deemed from the exile. He does not disputing. So don't let your hopes go down. He maintains that the redemption will be, will not by a human Mashiach, but the God himself. That's what the Rashi says. Rav Hillel says following, Mashiach, we already, we already ate, which is, means we already had enjoyment in the time of Chizkiah Melech. He says, all the prophecies that talk about the Mashiach, we already enjoyed during the Chizkiah Melech. But it says over here, Rashi, we're not going to be through the Mashiach. We're going to be directly through Hashem. That's what it means. What does it mean? Yad Ramah rejects the explanation of Rav Hilo. View of point out that Rav Hilo says, they already enjoyed the Mashiach era. How can Rav Hillel says they already enjoyed the Mashiach era in the days of Chizkiah, which is implied the redemption and the Messianic era has already come to pass. Rav Hillel says already passed the Mashiach time. Oh, Rabbi, what are you talking about? According to Rav Yam, Rad Yama, Rama, Rav Hillel maintains that the redemption promised in the Torah occurred when a God saved the Jewish people from some Khirif in the time of the Chizkiah Melech, he says, in the time of the Sanchirif, Hashem destroyed the army of the Sanchirif. Who was Sanchirif? Was the king. 2.6 billion soldiers he destroyed within one night. And he says, you already enjoyed that, Rav Hilo says. Ron have a view, look. However, he argues the, that the righteous Rav Hilo could not possibly have meant that the Jewish will remain in exile forever and become lost among the nations. Ron says something else. He says, I'm sorry. He argues that the righteous, like Rav Hillel, could say such a thing. What does it mean? The Torah explicitly, explicitly promise, attest, v'shav v'kabitzecha mikol ha'amim. God will return and God gather 
you in, from all the peoples. That's what it says in Sefer Dvarim 30.303. Hashem promises that He's going to gather us. Indeed, the entire passage speaks the matters. So the chapter 32, rather Rav Hillel, certainly agrees. There will be redeemed from the exile. He, he maintains, however, that the God, as soon as He redeemed us, He will be resurrected, resurrected the dead, and there will be benefit from the redeemance of His presence. He says, when uh, Rav Hilo is explaining to us something, he says, when there's a time of redemption, Hashem redeemed Himself, like it happened in the time of Egypt, and He's going to re resurrect the dead people right away. There's no need to be waiting 40 years, 70 years, does not need to be waiting. There will be no period of physical utopia intervening between the redemption and the resurrections for the period already can pass through the reign of Chizkia. When Rav Hillel said they already enjoyed the Mashiach era in the day of Chizkia, he was referring to the physical aspect of the Mashiach era. But the spiritual aspect is yet to be fulfilled. He says, whatever the physical aspect, Rav Hilo says, we already enjoyed it during the Chizkiah Melech time. But he says, the spiritual aspect, we're able to enjoy it in a time of, right now, we're getting closer to the Mashiach. For another approach, the Torah Ola and the Bartunura. So he says, there's many approaches. So we continue. The Gemara refutes the Rav Hillel view. Amar Rav Yosef, Shara le demar Rav Hillel. May the master forgive the Rav Hillel. What does it mean? That is to say, may God forgive Rav Hillel for making this statement. See Barachot 25a, Sukkah 32b. Alternatively, his expression means that the gods must have permitted Rav Hillel to say this, for otherwise he would not have dared to say it. The later usage as a found in a, in a Masechet Yoma. So we're going to go forward. Chizkiah ema hava. When the Chizkiah lived, Babayit Rishon, he lived in the first, during the first temple era. Velu Zachariah minachake Babayit Sheni. The Zachariah who was prophesizing during the second temple. So he says, following. Let's make it clear. Rejoice the greatly, O daughter of the Zion, shout out, a daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is the coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet humble, riding in a donkey. We already explained what a donkey means. Upon the cold, upon the fall, upon everything. Zachariah, who lived along after Chizkiah, predicted the Mashiach era, and it's all evident, therefore Chizkiah was not the Mashiach. So he says Zachariah was living in a second Bet HaMikdash. Chizkiah Melech was living in a first Bet HaMikdash. So whatever the Zachariah said, he said the future. He did not say the past. So let's make this clear. Zachariah 9.9 9 says following. The author of the book was Zachariah, the son of the Berchanin, who lived during the reign of the king Dairus in the end of the Babylon exile. And stated in the Zachariah 1.1, 1, 1, he's not to be confused with the Zachariah of the Yoada, with the prophesied during the first temple. There's a two Zachariah that was living in the, during the first temple, and there's uh, Zachariah was living in a second temple. The Gemara cites another Baraita discusses the land of the Mashiach era. Tanya, he was taught in another Baraita. Rabbi Eliezer says, your mother Mashiach Arbaim Shana. And Rabbi Eliezer says, the era will last 40 years. This is derived as the follow. The reference of the generation, we said this already. Like he's, he's repeating. So following it says, He afflicted you 
and let you go hungry, and you fed you the manna, man, which is means. According to the many Rishonim, Rav Hilo agrees that there will be the redemption. It's therefore understood why Rav Yosef did not re refute the Rav Hilo's view with one of the many verses about himself. He specifically used the verse which is refers to the Mashiach himself. See, infers from the Gemara that believes of the in the Mashiach is not a fundamental article of the faith. He says Mashiach is not very clearly. Gemara that believe in the Mashiach is not fundamental art article of the faith. Because if, if it were, Rav Hila will be demeaned, demeaned a her heretic and have not share in the world to come. Whoever does not believe in the Mashiach, and the Gemara already started, he has no share in the world to come. Rambam, however, does not consider it's an oracle of faith. Abarbanel defends the Rambam's view by arguing that since Rav Hillel does not diminish the, the promised reward of the Mashiach era, and does contrary in an increase by asserting that the God himself would redeem us, and cannot be concerned the non-believer in this principle. Nevertheless, it's improper to follow, nevertheless, it is improper to follow Rav Hilo's view. One who, one, who does, one who does so denies the law of the Torah, which is stated in the majority view of the exception of the authorities. So it says Rav Hilo, he cannot use a term the Mashiach is not going to come, or something that we don't believe the Mashiach is exist. It says one of the principles, the Rambam says, Mashiach is not our foundation of serving Hashem. But he says also it's not a person that does not believe that the Mashiach is not coming. He's also having no share in the world to come. Chas v'chalila. So each one of us have to know he's going to come. And he must come. It's going to be everything unexpected. Thank you for listening. Toda rabba alak shava. May Hashem bless the whole Am Yisrael. To have an achdut, unity, smile, joy, happiness. All the chatufim and chatufod, all the people that got kidnapped, kids, should return with the peace, tranquility. All the soldiers who might return to the houses. Should, may Hashem bring us a Mashiach. And we stop all the suffering that we're going through. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Robert.